What are you? Please check one. I stare at the page in front of me as the sound of pencil scratching paper fills the room. At the top, race. Fingers crossed, hoping this test will include a box for me. Caucasian, African American, Asian, Pacific Islander, Hispanic, Native American, other. I read it again, must have missed something, but hopeful turns to hopeless as I realize, according to this test, the best term for what I am is other. Please check one. Such a familiar dilemma, two choices. Please check one half of my identity or mentally check into the label other. Other than what? Other than something so easily categorized, constrained, wrapped neat and tidy with a bow, tell me to choose half of the blood in my veins when my heart beats the rhythms of salsa music and African drums. I am the child of afros and soul food and island beauty and words that don't translate and history and power and strength stronger than the walls of this box. This box built on shaky foundation, carelessly constructed brick by brutal brick, burnt red, bloodstained ignorance. Tell me, what does other look like? Would I know it if I saw it? Would you? I am a quarter Afghani, a quarter Mongolian, a quarter Spanish and a quarter Mexican. America's culture itself is quite overwhelming. Both my parents weren't adjust, fully adjusted to that yet. And as a kid, they were trying to put their own cultures on, on me as well. There is heavy influence from my dad's Middle Eastern side. Uh, he would always take me to mosque with him. He was a devout Muslim, whereas my mom was a Catholic. So we have two different cultures and two different religions going on in my house. So I'd be going to the mosque on Friday and then mass on Sunday. Being of multi-ethnic origins and just growing up, whether it be school or in my own families, I was, I was a misfit. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't really fit in anywhere. My father's father is black and his mother is Korean. And my mother is five different kinds of white and I can name four of them. She's Swedish, Danish, Scottish, German, and the fifth one. Race operates in one way for a lot of people who have, who see themselves as mono-ethnic and who the world sees as mono-ethnic. Race operates for them in a certain way. And for people like me, it, I mean, I don't know if it operates differently, but it feels like it operates differently. It certainly seems like it. When I was much, much younger, I identified absolutely exclusively as black, which is really interesting because the younger that I was, the less black I looked. At home in Oakland, I think people generally see me as more white, but I feel more black. And at Oxy, I think people see me as more black, but I feel more white. And then I'm like struggling to like push up the Korean so that it's in the picture, <laughs> yeah. I am Zimbabwean, Italian, Irish, Hungarian, and Austrian. I went to school with predominantly all white kids, so I was pretty much the only black girl in school for a very long time, so I was always otherized as a black girl. And then when I was finally given the opportunity to enter more black communities, I was the white girl, essentially, in the void, kind of just not really understanding where I fit in, and I still feel that. I've definitely had conversations, definitely with all my mixed race friends. We always like feel very connected to each other and kind of like we can breathe a little bit easier knowing that someone else kind of understands our experiences. So we're not just totally like otherized by everybody. We kind of fit in somewhere. I am. Uh, half Mexican-American uh, from my dad's side of the family. Um, my mother's side of the family, I guess I would be half Eastern European, um, Jewish. All those stereotypes were just in the air and just people were just grabbing at them. I mean, the, they're high school, it's like, I did stupid things in high school too. By the fact that I am split, that I have two identities, it just made, it was just like more ammo for them. Like they just had 
more stuff to attack me with. Like I'd be in the hallways and kids would just like throw pennies on the ground. Be like, oh yeah, I need um, some yard work done. Like, do you, can you come over? I was just a target. So nobody really knows how to talk about race. I don't think that there's ever a time that that shows more clearly than when people, you know, come up to people who are clearly of mixed ethnic background or clearly sort of ethnically ambiguous. You know, I think that people's uh, lack of sensitivity dealing with things really shows in those moments because you get the kind of things like, what are you? <laughs> like, where are you from? What are you, mixed race, biracial? What are you, are you Dominican? Like, what, where did you get this hair from? Can I touch your hair? Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. This isn't a petting zoo, <laughs> like what? Because I'm mixed, people uh, ask me a bunch of different things. Like, what am I? Who are you, where are your parents from? And then I tell them that I'm a Mexican Jew and they're like, whoa, like, what the fuck? <laughs> How did you become this strange being? <laughs> As a kid, the only thing I really wanted to do was like, oh yeah, I just want to fit in, I fit in. But now, now that I look back on it, that's just the worst. Why would you want to be someone else? Having my feet in both worlds, it was hard to situate myself. I didn't know where I wanted to be, really. I didn't know which one to fully identify with. I didn't want to neglect the other one completely. I didn't know if that was fair, but I didn't really also know how to find the middle ground and become somewhere in between. When you're mixed, you're, you're able to have your foot in many different doors. Um, and you may not be able to get all the way in the door, but you know, you can, you can smell the food coming from the kitchen and you can hear the sounds beyond the door. You can tell the temperature of the air in the room. Don't think of it as a negative. Start trying to think of it as something positive and something that sets you apart from other people. I know now that I, I can go into each culture with a just open arms because I know, oh, they have this much history behind it. There's going to be so much more like knowledge and just, uh, opportunity I can learn from these different cultures. Like, I don't believe anyone should confine themselves just to one culture. We're moving through new stages in life, like evolution is happening. There doesn't have to be so many clear categories and delineations of what you are. Identity is a hard thing to, to form. What are you? I am a human, a man with many hues. At first glance, my identity is often misconstrued, but I am you, in the flesh. I am Inglakesh. I am that breath of air that keeps life refreshed. I am a descendant of the ancient, layers under the pavement. I am a peaceful warrior, bodhisattva for love that gets flagrant. I guess when God painted this portrait, it took all of her imagination. A prayer that called upon the most innovative creation. What I'm saying is that nothing can skew me from my direction. My geometric reflection ensures my life's human connection. Split my life into sections and each one will still have the code. Like how in each one of our cells our genome connects us to the globe. Since before the dawn of humanity, our origin is infinity. I can hear my grandfather saying, come here, mijo, sit with me. What he did for me, hmm, it goes beyond the blood in my veins because he wasn't her bio dad, but he raised my mother just the same. That's why I'm French, African, Mexican, and Sicilian by name. And as my identity becomes less difficult to frame, we march on with an even more united front we rise to meet the needs and universify our wants. I am me. My existence, my purpose is unique. I am that I am. I am whole, perfect, and complete. <laughs>